Hi, Ashika. Hey, Tracy. Good to see you. And I know the Howards are out here as well. Hello. Got a few folks coming in. So we'll just give it a few minutes. I hope everybody's having a good Monday. They uh, decided to cut a tree down next door to me about 15 minutes ago. It's really lovely to hear the bulldozer about 20 feet from my office window. But, you know, you guys don't hear it, so that's good. So if I'm a little off my game today, that's why. <laughs> But uh, all right, well, we're getting started just as a quick check-in. Everybody should have the uh, workbook. And if you don't, make sure you comment and let me know so I can get it over to you. But we're just going to give it another minute here before we get started. All right, so we're going to kick things off. If anybody else jumps in, I will let them into the room and certainly share the recordings. For everybody that is either catching us live here or watching on the replay, you are going to need a pen and paper this week because I'm going to cover over the course of eight business days, a little bit different this time, no weekends, um, a lot of information. And I do this session called Level Up Lead Gen. I've done it for two years now, maybe two times a year. I do it. It is intensive on my mind to do it uh, because, as you know, everything is up here. But I'm so excited to be able to share knowledge that I build in my own business with you so you can take that and implement it within your own business and on your own journey. Uh, I'm Courtney Zentz, for those of you that are new to this particular training, and I am the accidental business coach, which is something that came about as the fact I was a sleep coach for almost a decade now and was always helping people that I trained with to do better in business, right? We all have these skills, but we're not so good in the business side of things. And so uh, I sort of accidentally fell into this because my background was business for about 15 years in corporate, and now I'm here. And I love teaching. I still work with plenty of sleep clients. We have a new sleep coaching uh, mobile app and we do private coaching and I do business coaching and I do business consulting and corporate sleep coaching. So I do a little bit of coaching and consulting on both sides. And I love every day of my life. You know, I was posting something this morning that said, um, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I get to do both the sleep side and the business side. So it's pretty good for me. Kelly here uh, is also on the Tiny Transitions slash Courtney Zentz Consulting team. So if you need anything from her, she's out here as well and is a wealth of knowledge in all things business. So she's going to be joining us this week as well. So welcome, everybody. Let's jump in. Uh, first and foremost, you should all have the workbook. Because I talk a lot, you're going to take notes, but there's also some questions in there that are meant to be thought stimulators as it relates to what we're covering. Today's topic is all about value and why value doesn't necessarily mean a ton more work or time on your behalf, right? So over the course of the next eight days, let me explain how it's going to work before we dive into the good stuff, okay? Today, we're talking about value. Today is Monday, okay? Anybody who wants to catch this on the replay, if you registered, you're getting the recordings. If you didn't register, you're not. So make sure if you want your friends to get this, you tell them to register, um, tomorrow we're talking about how free equals more paying clients. I give away more in both my business coaching, this webinar and my sleep coaching than anybody in the space, hands down. And you'll see why it translates into more business. We're going to cover that on Tuesday, Wednesday. We're talking about content mapping. I actually do this exercise every month and a half or so to figure out what things we're deficient in, where we need to rank, what content's really trending well and build content that supports that. It's not just shoot in the dark today, I feel like writing about. It's strategic content curation based on SEO, market opportunity, backlinks, areas of growth, right? All these different things that I'm trying to do in both my business and sleep business. On Thursday, we're talking about packaging, positioning, and pricing because everybody that is on the call generally isn't charging what they're worth or they're trying to be so competitive in a space that's equally saturated, that when everybody sells the same thing, it's a race to the bottom with price. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay. Friday, we're going to cover money and mindset. Okay. That was one of my favorite sessions last January. So many people I very clearly remember were like game breaker. This was amazing. So that's going to be on Friday. We're not doing anything over the weekend. Okay. Um, because it's too hard. People have things going on, including myself, but more so I found that People came less because they already had things going on. So I'm like, forget it. We don't need to be here on the weekend. It'll let people catch up. 
If you can't come out live every day, you can watch the recordings. You can actually spend the time diving into this very large packet of information and start implementing changes in your business right away. Okay. Monday next week. So a week from today, we're going to cover building a partner referral network. I have a huge partner network. I have a huge past client referral network. Referrals are the source of up to 82% of your new revenue. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about how I do that in the business. And then we're going to get into building your first email campaign. A lot of people get really nervous about this type of stuff. And my goal as the accidental business coach is to kind of show you through even just this free session, how you can take small steps forward, because even small steps forward at the end of the day, guys, is forward progress, right? And people are going to move at different speeds. I move fast. I talk fast. I'm going to teach you fast because I try to jam as much as I can into eight days for free. Okay. But I also don't want you to be overwhelmed where you leave feeling like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Because I am going to share a lot of information. Okay. And then next Wednesday, our final day, we're going to cover two different tools from an SEO standpoint that I use every day in both businesses. And we're going to have somebody who wins the contest, get a complete audit of their website, their SEO, their gaps, their competitors, what they're doing, what they're not doing, what you should be doing. So if you want to win that, it's almost a $300 value, okay, with just the SEO part alone. And then we're going to tack the content stuff onto there. So it's like 500 bucks, typically what I charge when I do this for other consulting agencies who are looking for some help. Okay. So somebody's going to win that. Your only thing that you have to do to get there is every night there's going to be homework takes maybe five minutes. Okay. So whoever every night does their homework each session, you will get the opportunity to be entered. And I'll pick that name at the end of the session on Tuesday so that we know who's going to be up for Wednesday. And I have enough time to like look at your site and get everything done and organized because we're going to do it live on Wednesday. So that's a little bit of a roadmap of what to expect. I promise this is the most I'll talk before we get started, but you got to know what you're getting into, especially if it's your first time here. Ah, <sighs> So I'm like just excited to do this. Uh, as you know, I don't use a script, okay? I just teach from my heart and what's in my mind based on what's worked in my business. I've built a very successful sleep coaching agency. I've built a very successful business coaching agency. And I do it with authenticity, frankly. Um, my mission is to fall asleep every night feeling joy. And I do that by helping others. And it finally was something I realized in the past few months of kind of self-discovery. Like, what do I want to do? What do I love to do? And how can I help people? And ultimately was that, when I help other people in the capacity of like cooking for the homeless or decorating the front of our neighborhood or helping you guys with a very jam-packed session like this, all of those activities I do by choice because they bring me joy. Okay. So I'm here truly to, to help you in your business, wherever you are, whether you're seasoned, whether you're new, whether you're trying to figure out if you want to launch a side hustle or quit your corporate job and go to a new business, whatever that might be, um, these sessions are going to help you. And I picked the topics very strategically. Okay. Today we're talking all about value because I think value is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. And I have changed every single quarter for the past five years, my packages. And I'll tell you why I changed them. Does what I provide, provide the right amount of value for the price that we're choosing based on the market need at the moment, okay? So many people, when they get into this space, go out and I'll tell you what you did. You wanted to become a sleep coach or you were, uh, I just saw it yesterday in a Facebook group for like Westchester career-driven females or something. Somebody's like, I'm starting a new business as, um, a, a certified running instructor. So I, I'm assuming they're helping people without getting into too much detail to learn to run, right? And she was talking about how do I price myself? How do I package my packages? And somebody commented and was like, Google your competition and price comparatively to them. And I'm like, oh, maybe you should join this session, right? So if you are joining and you did register, welcome. Um, but I immediately was like, no, like people don't necessarily when they come to buy you, understand the difference, right? And I'll use sleep coaches as an example because I was one, I still am one, and a lot of you are sleep coaches, right? But it can be applicable across any industry. When you first get started, you come home and you're like all gung-ho to build your website and build out your packages, right? I don't wanna look anything like you, no offense, okay? But my differentiation is what makes me valuable. Right. So in the Facebook post last night, I said, hey, like, are you niching in 
are you working with just females over the age of 40 who want to run their first half marathon, right? Are you working with, you know, new college graduates to train for their first full marathon? Like who's your niche and who are you speaking to? Because when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one, right? And so you want to start by building out the value of who you are and what your story is unique to your business and your opportunity. Okay. I certainly know that people will come home and go, all right, I did the same thing. Like, let me see. Um, okay. How do we price packages? Oh, there's my competitors. Here's what they're doing. Right. And then you price it like around the same price for like a hundred bucks or 200 bucks difference. Right. Well, then how are you different? I see this all the time in the sleep coaching space. And I know you're all guilty of it, right? You go out and you see, and then you price it. And then somebody goes, why are you different? You're like 200 bucks more than the girl down the road. Well, the girl down the road just started, doesn't know what she's doing, doesn't bring the experience. Like I sell more $2,000 sleep coaching packages for three weeks, $2,000. Okay. Three weeks, two grand. I sell more of those than my base package, which is $995, right? Well, what makes me different than the sleep coach down the road that charges $495? Uh, 10 years, several thousand clients, experience, um, balance, grace in what I'm doing, what I'm teaching, right? There is more value than just those bullets that you put up on the website, right? And confidence is a big part of that, guys. You should value based on the perspective of the client you're going after. What does that mean? Okay, two types of purses. My purse is a $300 Rothy purse. I can stick it in the washing machine when my kids smash applesauce and goldfish in it, which generally happens once a week, okay? Every single mom in Carline at my kid's school has a three or $4,000 Louis Vuitton never full bag. They value that bag for a variety of reasons that is important to them, but they will likely never go to Target and buy a $20 handbag, okay? They value something about that purse differently. Is it the size? Is it the leather? Is it the color? Is it the feeling? It doesn't matter, right? I value this purse for two reasons. One, I can throw it in the wash when my kids smash stuff in it, right? It stands up like this. So I don't have to worry about it, like flopping over and sagging with my crap all falling out. Okay. And on the inside, it has a little insert. So I can take it straight away when I go out to dinner once a year with my husband. And I can also throw this in the wash. Okay. So to each person, guys, values in the eye of the beholder. There are petty clients willing to spend 2000 as there are only willing to spend 495 bucks. Doesn't make either package wrong, but I would rather work with one client at 2000 and just jam pack value in that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna cost me more time and have those clients understand that the value I'm providing is more superior than my peers, right? Because everybody looks at the website and goes, uh, preliminary sleep assessment, no disrespect, but that's a sales call, okay? Written sleep program. Okay. Check. Everybody's doing that to some degree better than the others. Ours are very good. I spent 10 years curating them, but some are like four pages. Pretty sure the template I got when I got done certifying was like four pages. Okay. Written sleep plan. Uh, two or three weeks of private coaching. Okay. Maybe a phone call. Maybe not. A lot of sleep consultants don't even offer phone calls anymore, which I don't understand um, how you can effectively have conversations on just WhatsApp, but that works for their business, not for mine. Right. And then you sit there and you go, all right, email support. We're both doing that. Uh, sleep regression master bundle. Okay. We're all doing that. Right. So you're sitting there and you like, your packages are exactly the same. Oh, and maybe because you're new, you're throwing on text support and weekend support and 2 a.m. support. Some sleep consultant that had been here last year for one of these sessions was offering free overnight support the entire week of coaching for the whole first week. And her, her package was like $495. I'm like, you're literally getting up at three in the morning when they direct message you like, wow, wow. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. Like I charge $2,000 in addition to stay up all night because I'm sacrificing sleep to sit here live all night on zoom or in your house to help you through your sleep coaching journey. And you're going to pay for that, right? Because the, the cost for me is that I lose sleep. I lose a whole day of productivity the next day because I have to sleep, right? And you're just giving everything away for free. And there's no value in that. And just throw it in. People expect it. 
right? People respect me more because I charge $2,000 than they ever did when I first came out of sleep coaching and charged 395 for the same work, a little bit more value, obviously, but like essentially the same work. And they were just needy and wanting everything, everything, everything. You got to pay for it. You know why? Because I value my time. And I only work, I have no problem getting clients. So I work with the clients I want that understand my value. If you don't, there's another consultant somewhere else. I just passed off of a client who was a referral from a very prominent client that I had. And they wanted me to work at the end of the day at five o'clock Pacific. And they wanted me to work on the weekends. Well, my kids are both in travel sports. I can't dedicate being around. And frankly, I don't want to work on the weekends. And I don't want to work every night between five and eight o'clock because you're on the West Coast. So yes, I would love to work with you because you're a high profile referral, but I ain't out in LA and that doesn't work for me. And I'm okay now saying no. And I passed that lead off because that doesn't work for me, right? When you come out of a place of desperation for the work or the business or the coaching or the consulting, people can sense that, right? I did some coaching last year with somebody in the lab and I was like, dude, you got to lock it up, okay? She's like, I got to lower my prices. I don't know, this one's doing that. This competitor's doing that. I'm like, everybody's full of it, okay? Focus on yourself. So anybody could be like, I, I have an eight figure business. Eight figures when? Lifetime? I, I have a seven figure business over the past 10 years. So I could easily be like, I started a seven figure sleep coaching business. How does that sound? You feel bad because you don't have a seven figure business. Well, what's the parameters? You might have sold $100,000 this week in a launch, but it cost you $95,000 in ads. So congratulations, you made five grand, right? Marketing is sneaky, my friends, right? But if you build trust and you build quality work and you build value into what you're doing, it makes it much easier for you to look at your packages, to know that you're worth it and to know that the value you're providing your clients, they want, right? Because when, again, they're looking at all the different people who do personal training or do personal shopping or do web design or whatever, your proposals are all going to look the same. Your specs are all going to be kind of similar, right? To the point where sometimes people might not even notice those differences that actually are the most valuable differences, right? That's, that's the part that you have to look at to go, how do I build value into whatever it is that I'm offering? And what do people value? I'll tell you in the world of coaching, you know what they value? Me. Not the sleep training method, not the written sleep plan, not the unlimited email support or 24 by seven tech support or whatever else people think they want when they're sleep training, okay? They value me. They value talking to me. They value having me as someone they can get advice from right? On the sleep coaching side, people book my $2,000 package for a reason, more longer access to me, but with parameters. You see, before I used to just offer one package, three weeks, we're done. But I found clients wanted to keep me around. And they're like, well, how much would it cost for me to be your like sleep coach on call to be your concierge sleep coach or whatever, right? Same with business coaching. When the lab first started, it was one offer group coaching, six months, right? And then all of a sudden people were like, well, wait a minute, I, I want you to do my website. I want there to be strategic work. I want you to do, you know, content analysis. I want you to show me how to set up my whole system. I just got a, a new corporate consulting client um, just last week who wants me to come in and like set up their whole CRM and do data scraping for them for leads and stuff. It's in like an environmental tech industry. It's not even like in the world of sleep, but they don't know how to do it. And I do, right? So they value me and the access to what I can provide. OK, with you guys, you've got to look at the value and access to you is generally the most valuable. But you have to look at it in a way that builds boundaries around it. You can't be all things all the time to all people. But my packages have done the best when I did a couple different things. And we're going to dive more into the specifics of packages on Thursday. I think that's Thursday, right? I changed the order. Yeah, Thursday. OK, this time I changed the order because I'm not doing the weekend. So we're going to get more into the packaging, positioning and pricing aspect on Thursday, so I don't wanna like steal my thunder, but you've gotta look at like, what do people want, right? In sleep coaching, they want access to a coach. They wanna be able to put questions back and forth, right? In the space of anything where you're hiring a consultant, it's generally the access to the consultant that people want, right? Whether you're building a course to teach people how to get, you know, 
college scholarships, or you're building a course to teach people how to build worm farms, right? Well, when your worm farm isn't properly eating all your magazines, you got to ask somebody like, what the hell's wrong with my worm farm? My worms aren't eating. What am I doing wrong, right? Access to someone is what's helpful. I just launched Sleep Steps. It's a sleep coaching course, but not really. It's meant to be a community. It's meant to be a course and it's meant to have coaching and it's priced so that it's accessible and affordable by all families. People are like, why are you doing that? You're charging $47 a month for something that could easily be a couple hundred. I don't want to charge a couple hundred. My mission with this product is to build quality sleep education for all families and that everybody deserves the gift of sleep and it shouldn't be something that's out of people's costs, right? Because private sleep coaching can be, right? And we've all seen it. If ebooks are not effective, you need a coach. But to get a coach, you got to spend a couple hundred more bucks, right? So I looked at the market opportunity for sleep coaching and I was like, okay, well, there's these ebooks and courses that are 100 to 500 bucks. You have to buy each age and stage. You get no access to a coach. And maybe you get a Facebook group that may or may not show you the latest post based on the algorithm, right? There's a blue ocean opportunity, guys. If you've never heard that term, like sleep coaching is becoming a red ocean, as an example, right? A lot of competitors, a lot of people. You got to do things different. How do you do it? Different and better. Okay, with any industry, you got to do it different or better. So what I did was I looked at the industry and said, okay, this has this. This is cost prohibitive. They need access to this. They want this. And I built sleep steps out of it, right? Whatever you're building, people generally want you, but you has to be something that increases value without increasing your time commitment, okay? Sleep Steps gives them private access to me, but one hour a week on Zoom, Wednesdays at 12 o'clock, right? As Sleep Steps grows, we will add more one-on-one -on -one sessions that my team can also handle. And I compensate my team members to take those calls, right? And to be the coach on Zoom. So as the Sleep Steps grows, the calls will grow, right? And the value with the fact that you can get like access to a coach, wow, right? Today at one o'clock, inside Sleep Steps, I'm doing a bonus training at a grocery shop. Value. I teach people how I help my kids to eat well, how I let them pick for lunches, and then how I go to the grocery store every week and buy things that strategically fit so that I can meal plan, save money, have good, clean, whole foods, and my kids actually want to eat it and the lunch doesn't end up in the trash. Right. So it's like that's a value add for parents who are in sleep steps who want some additional training. And it's what it's costing me an hour. I'm going to record it and then I can reuse it in the library for over and over use. Right. So whether you're selling one to one coaching, group based coaching, which is one to many or a course, all of these things can have added value without added time. That's the whole point of today. Not everything has to be, oh, so much more value is going to take up so much more time, right? It doesn't have to. And I always look at my business and I challenge you to do the same, to look at it and go, how can I be different or better, right? You've got to research what people want in your space. What are they looking for? What are the pain points? Do some market research, right? I work with a ton of pediatricians. You know why? Because they don't know anything about sleep. They're not trained in sleep. These are not clinical issues that they're facing. So they have no business like kind of in it. And I say that as somebody who works with a lot of pediatricians, right? They don't know sleep because we're not dealing with sleep clinical issues. We're dealing with bad habits, guys, right? In the space of sleep coaching. And that really goes for anything. So my motivation is always to do things different and better. So I challenge you based on where you are in your business or where you want the business to be, how can you do it different or better? If you want to grow a team, because you're maxed out, right? And you can't take any more private clients because there's only so many hours in the day, right? And you are not allowed to create a course because you're uh, within you know, a specific certification program that prohibits that, right? How do you do it different or better? You can grow a team. And then when you grow a team, there's multipliers in there with like revenue and percentages, right? I went from a team of one to a team of 10 almost overnight. And I'll tell you what, training one person took the same amount of time as training 10. Now I have eight amazing sleep coaches five years later, all over the country, 
Still nobody out West, but that's on my bucket list for this year because of the time issue. Um, I've got to get somebody out there, but that doesn't matter. That's besides the point. I have an amazing team. They're specialized coaches. They niche in. I have coaches that work with just toddlers, ADHD and autism, special needs, OTPT, newborns, right? Like lactations, car seat safety. I mean, you name it, like English, Spanish. Like I've got coaches that kind of tackle. I have the only male sleep coach in the country for kids. Chris, he's in Missouri, right? So I have niched in, built value around a team that's amazing and am able to scale the, the organization because I have all these people who are able to do now eight times the amount of work I could with clients, you see? So it's not always like, oh my gosh, I just have to offer 900 more private coaching packages. But I would advise, and we're going to talk about it on Thursday, that when you're trying to price your offer, you look at what you're selling, okay? With the lab, I have the course and the group coaching. I'm going to teach you more in six months than you've ever learned in your life from any coach. I guarantee that. But there are still people who are going to want the private side of things. And there's an option for that. They need me. They want me. They need my brain to look at their business and do it different. So I provide people both quality options. Some people are only going to value this because that's what they need where they are right now. And other people value this, right? So it kind of just depends on where you are in your business. There's no right or wrong, but there's a million different ways to build value and to create recurring revenue around it based on what it is that you're selling and offering, right, to clients. So I want you to think on that because it is such a different mindset in how you can do it different and better, right? I, and Kelly is is brutally honest with me sometimes. She's like, you need to stop. You need to stop thinking. Because I'll call her, I'll text her. And I'm like, I got a new idea. What about this? What about this? You know, and she's like, okay, that's a great idea, but calm down, you know? Because my mind is always trying to innovate. Like, how do I do this different and better? Guys, you can do all of it, no matter what your industry, no matter what your segment, right? Stop doing what everybody else does. I don't want to look like you. No offense. I build value because I'm different. Because for eight days, I'm going to share everything I've learned for 10 years in this sleep coaching business, but plus 15 in corporate. And I'm going to share with you for free. Why? Because I truly ultimately want you to feel success. And then for those people that want to continue on in the lab, great. It's an option. If you don't, you're not leaving this like that sucked waste of eight days right? No, you're going to leave and be like, oh, this is so good. Okay. Like I've got a lot to do, right? That's the point. I am doing things different and better. I've had plenty of business coaches, plenty of consultants, plenty of personal trainers and all the things that did it just like everybody else. Half of them were full of it. Half of them had no idea what they were doing. And it wasn't until I really became a strategic minded entrepreneur that I started to realize everybody was full of it, right? Not everybody, but most people are full of it. Um, and a lot of times it comes down to why should they choose me, right? Why do you want me to be your business coach? Why do you want me to be your sleep coach, right? Why do you want to hire me for corporate consulting over somebody else whose proposal might have been a little cheaper, right? Price is not equated with value, okay? I don't know why it's making that, but I mean, maybe that was a bomb moment or somebody put a comment in. My, my Zoom has been doing this weird thing with the balloons and the celebratory things. I don't know if you saw those fireworks, Maybe I was dropping a good thing. It's something new. But if you saw those, happy 4th of July. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Um, okay. And one thing you have to do every quarter. I've got a couple things. Okay. I change my prices and I change my packages. And I look at the market, right? My team tells me, hey, this is really resonating well, or this is not resonating well. We got to adjust here. I like this, but I don't like that. You know what I stopped doing? Probably five years into sleep coaching. I stopped offering bedtime support. You know why? Because the entire time my kids were going to bed that I was trying to read wherever you are, my love will find you and twinkle, twinkle, little star, my phone was going off. Why? Because clients were like, what time should bedtime be? I'm like, the wake window is three hours. They woke at four. What's four plus three? Oh, seven. I'm like, right. We just spent 90 minutes going over that. And you have a written sleep plan with sample schedules that says if baby wakes at four, put them to bed at seven. And then I was starting to actually get pissed at my kids. Crazy, right? Because I kept getting interrupted by my clients and I was getting pissed at my kids. 
And I'm like, oh, just one more second, guys, seven o'clock. And then two seconds later, okay, well, the pillow shifted four degrees right. And I'm like, okay, let's shift it back. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'm done with this. I'm pissed. I'm now resentful to my kids. I'm trying to enjoy the two hours a day as a working mom that I actually get to see them. And I'm answering questions for you about what time your kid needs to go down when I just gave it to you written. I just gave it to you in the consult and I'm now pissed at my kids. This isn't working. And I stopped doing bedtime support, which is exactly why last week I turned down a $2,000 client who came from a very prominent referral because I didn't want to work at bedtime. I didn't want to work on the weekends. My daughter does competitive Irish dance. My son plays soccer and football and baseball and 9 million other things. And I'm not working all over the place. I'm already up every day at five o'clock, including on the weekends. 5.01, I'll be on my computer seven days a week. Why? Because I love working. And it's my unwind time. I'm most creative at 5 a.m. But by eight o'clock, especially on the weekends, I'm with my kids, right? They're up and up and at them. Most days during the week, I'm up at five. I stop at seven, get them on the bus. I work from eight to three. I'm done at three o'clock. Good luck finding me. Unless I'm sitting at dance, writing a blog post, peace out. I'm done at three, five to three. I'm most creative in the morning. I'm done at three o'clock, right? Those are my boundaries. I'm still working a full day. I just start my day at 5 a.m., which is really good for people over in Europe, (laughs) but not so much for the West Coast, except my client right now that I do have is in California, a different one that's a past client that I was willing to work with because she was cool and um, just wanted to hire me again. And I was like messaging her this morning at five. Her daughter was up once last night, did great otherwise, but like she got it. I'm like, look, I'm not offering bedtime support. Like you want to hire me again because you love me. That's great. Here's my boundaries. And she's like, cool, let's go. And she's a nurse. She gets it. Her second kid's just much more challenging than her first, but that worked for them, you know? So you got to figure out how you're going to be innovative in what you're offering to make it different than everybody else, because that becomes your speaking point, right? I don't have just another course or another ebook or another DIY program, right? I have course, 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 coaching community, same thing I'm trying to build in the lab course coaching community. But the difference is like, I went to a training a couple months ago, Right. Spent five days learning all about LinkedIn, right? You know, and she tried to sell me a $5,000 course just to learn LinkedIn. Like one platform? I don't value that. And I'm pretty good at LinkedIn already and get great reach and love it, right? But I was surprised because what I'm trying to do with the lab is different, right? It's teaching you everything about business because most people know their niche. They don't know business. So I'm doing it different where I teach you all of it, but it is a lot of information, right? but it's in a good way. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to look at things and go, all right, this package is working. This package isn't. This is working. This isn't. I do it in the lab. I do it with sleep steps. I do it with my private coaching. I do it with my team, right? And you're allowed to do it. You know why? Because it's your business. What do you want it to look like? And then how are you going to do it different and better? Okay. So those are things that I do and starting with this and a little bit of a side homework that I'm going to give you that I wasn't planning on, but that I think is really important for you to do is I will put it out in uh, the Facebook group. So if you're not in the Harmony and Hustle Facebook group, join the Facebook group because that's where the homework is going to be. If you want to participate in the homework to get the SEO and content audit, competitive content SEO, okay, or... um you want to get this little template. Okay. What I do every quarter is I time block guys. And I wasn't planning on talking about it today, but I'll essentially I'll explain what I do and I'll put the printout out there. And for those of you that have joined before, of course, my pen's not working. Give me a sec here. I do things on the fly. So it's basically a piece of paper that has a grid, right? And I actually just did this with Kelly because we're doing some new stuff. And it's basically a piece of paper with a grid that's I've done in Canva, it looks more professional, but it literally starts the day at 5 a.m. because that's when I wake up and it stops my day at nine o'clock because that's when I go to bed every night, no matter what, don't care, seven days a week, okay? And then from seven to eight, it's blacked out. From three o'clock to four o'clock, it's blacked out. And then sometimes I leave the times open when my kids are at dance because I know like I'm sitting there for an hour and a half, I can put my headphones on and write a blog post or something, right? Or create some social content. But I time block, How many hours a week do you actually have to work? When people come to me and they're like, I want to make six figures this year or seven figures. It's like, all right, cool. You're working three hours a week. Good luck, right? Unless you're flipping some MLM company, that's not happening, right? You got to make sure that what amount of time you have 
translates to the value of your packages so you can price accordingly to earn what you want. Make sense? So the time blocking aspect of this is almost equally as important as figuring out what you're going to sell and then the value that's going to make you different. Okay. Because that's going to be an equal part to this. And I'll put that time blocking exercise out there. But I want you to understand, you've got to go out and spend some time doing homework. Inside of the workbook, okay, there are prompting questions that I want you to take the time and actually walk through. How has research crafted what you're selling? Oh, I just ripped off the guy down the road. Or no, I'm being innovative by doing this because I've notified a gap in the market here, right? What are new and innovative, innovative ways to launch? I do these free trainings to push people into the lab if they choose to join. I'm showing a bit of my value for free over eight days, right? Over five days, over one day. I did a Pinterest live on newborn sleep. It was smashing success. One hour, whole bunch of cameras. Actually 10 o'clock at night, I was exhausted, but they're on the West Coast. So I had to be live at 10 PM. And I had like a hundred cameras and my face all done up and a lot of coffee that day. Um, but it's, you know, it's worth it for the return, which was so many new clients coming in, right? And then you have to look at like, how are you measuring the success? What systems are you using, right? Thinking you're doing this from an Excel spreadsheet with PayPal and Venmo, good luck. You gotta look at conversions and your conversion metrics. And to know if I, if I get my face in front of a thousand people a day, on Instagram or TikTok or wherever it is you prefer to launch, right? And you're like, okay, how many people yield one conversion? It doesn't matter if you're using paid ads, Google ads, social media, blogging, like what your strategy is to get to the top of your funnel, okay? If you know that you wanna sell one person getting into sleep steps every day, which is my sleep coaching course and community, okay? So if I know to make one conversion, I have to get in front of a thousand people. How do I get in front of a thousand people? A reel, one reel. So if one reel gets in front of a thousand, 5,000, whatever the number. And I know that to convert one person, I need 5,000 views. Then you'd be damn sure every day I'm doing one reel, right? So you've got to look at your numbers and then look at your conversion metrics. When I talk to people and they're like, I have no idea what my conversion metrics are. I have no idea who's coming to my website. I don't know how much my click-through ratio is or how much they've been on my page. I just, you know, they booked a call and we had our sales call and then I, I didn't hear from them again. So I guess they went elsewhere. Did you follow up? Are you doing anything around nurtures? That's why we talk about email campaigns this week. Like you got to know your numbers. I need a thousand people to book one person. I need five sales calls to book one private coaching client. I need 10 corporate to book one $5,000 corporate gig. What's your lead funnel look like? And how are you maximizing the flow? Because just like every other funnel, guys, you know, I plant a thousand seeds every year outside. Try to get these damn butterflies to show up. I plant a thousand seeds. I maybe get 25 of those little tumbleweed things the monarchs eat when they're babies. I forget what it's called. Buckwheat? No, doesn't matter. It's pretty orange flowers, but you know, that's the only thing that baby monarchs as caterpillars will eat. And so milkweed, that's it. So I plant a thousand milkweed seeds, hoping I get like 25 little sprouts to come up because the birds eat my seeds before they, they can actually sprout. But I know I get 25. So if I plant a thousand seeds, I get 25 milkweed. How many do you have to plant? You got to know your numbers. You got to figure out what you're going to do different, right? And why you should do it every quarter, pricing, packaging, positioning. What I talked about, like, what do you love to sell? Last time we did this, somebody was like, I hate selling. I think it was like bedtime support or they hated WhatsApp texting. It was texting. And I remember who it was, but I won't call her out. She's like, I hate text support. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to offer that. It ruins my day. When I just hear my phone constantly like ping, 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 ping. And I wake up to a hundred text messages. I'm like, then why do you offer it? Curate your packages so you love what you're selling, right? Because if you hate what you sell, it comes across. It comes across on the calls, on the Zooms, on your lives. As I mentioned at the start of this, there was somebody in the lab last year and I was like, you got to take that shit off Instagram. You look miserable. Nobody's buying from you. You look sad and depressed and desperate. Nobody wants to buy from sad, depressed and desperate, right? You got to love what you sell. 
because it makes selling it so much easier. I love the lab. I love teaching you. That comes across in a free session, right? I love sleep coaching. I love seeing success. Kelly was here the other day. We were working on content strategy. I got a beautiful review from a client that I actually thought was going to be really hard to work with. They were a private equity family. Like, you know, they came from a lot and I was like, oh, this is a referral from somebody else. And I don't know that I want to deal with this. They were the best couple I've ever worked with, hands down, three kids. And she wrote me the nicest email. She's like, you have fundamentally changed our life. I sat there and started tearing up. She's like, are you crying? I'm like, I think I am. Because it's like, you're changing people's lives. It doesn't matter what you sell, right? You sell fitness and weight loss. When I had my stomach removed, okay, which is like a whole different story, I dropped to 97 pounds, right? Most people spend every day staring at that scale, trying to figure out how to lose weight. I'll tell you guys, the mental on the other side of that is I spend every day trying to figure out how to gain weight, okay? It's equally as mental, right? But for me, I need to work with somebody who understands how to put weight on, right? And I have to work with a coach who can help me do that while also balancing my love for exercise because I can't lose weight. Without my stomach, I can't eat a lot. So everything I eat, I have to be very conscious about to make sure I'm not losing weight, right? I stopped drinking beers a few weeks ago. I'm now down like five pounds and I really only drank like one or two beers on a weekend. I'm like, do I just start drinking beer again just to keep my weight on? You know, and we, my husband and I were kind of joking, but kind of not because I'm like, I don't, at least like a beer or two gave me some extra calories, right? So I'm like trying, I can't eat any more almonds. Like I'm trying to figure out. So we were joking. Can I drink, you know, uh, like I'll get some NA beers because um, when you don't have a stomach, you also get a little, little buzzed quicker, but I just don't love the idea of drinking anymore. Not that it matters, but it was like, shoot, I, I, I got to keep my weight on. Right. So for me, like I need to niche in with somebody who can help me to do that and understand what I'm going through without my stomach. I have to find very specialized doctors who from a family practice standpoint, know that I'm like, not like anybody they've ever seen. Right. And so you've got to figure out like who you want to be and what person you want to serve. Right. I'm a very niche person to serve, but there's a couple thousand of me around the world. You become the master of people with no stomach and CDH one. Cool. You're the master of that area, right? You can niche into that level of niche. You just got to figure out what it is. And you got to love to do it because if you don't, it's going to come across. Okay. So your homework for tonight is going to be out in Facebook. Okay. If you're not in the Harmony and Hustle group, join it. Uh, I can pop the link out here or Kelly, if you have a second, if you could just grab it and pop it in the chat so I don't get all discombobulated going to my other screen. Um, but I want you to share like one light bulb moment. That's it. That's all your homework is out on Facebook. What is one light bulb moment as you sit and digest what I'm sharing with you that makes you think, okay, I've been looking at this all wrong. And it's not that it's necessarily even wrong, guys. It's just different. How can you do it different and better? That's the challenge. Okay. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to open it up for some questions because I tend to just chat the whole time and then everybody feels like, oh my gosh, what did she mean by that? Or I had a question and I didn't get to answer it. So I'm going to open it up. We got 15 minutes. I'm going to try to do this every day since I know I cover a lot. Your homework's out there in Facebook. It'll be out there when we're done. And then all of the recordings before we jump into questions are going to be uh, available for you. We'll send out a link where you can access all of them if you want to keep them in your pocket because you're like, okay, she dropped a lot of knowledge and I really want access to that. Uh, I've got it inside of our new lab portal. So you'll be able to go out and register for free and access all of the recordings and the workbook for the future, because you might want to come back to it in six months when you go, I need a little bit of Courtney in my life. And day one was awesome. So let me pause. Tell me how you're feeling. Who wants to go first? If anybody has any questions, uh, certainly jump off mute and ask, or just pop them in the chat if you don't want to come off mute. Meantime, I can drop the workbook over here. Any questions? How are we feeling, Tracy? I know this was your first time in a couple months since I've done Level Up Lead Gen. What new things are you kind of sitting there going, oh, okay, now I've stewed on this for six months? Mm -hmm. I think the challenging thing for me that I've seen is how to be different. Like what's different about me than anybody else. I mean, one of my own clients um, has since decided to become certified because it was so life changing for her. 
and now is like a total competitor. So I'm like, oh, because now she's like in all the same groups that I'm in and she's, you know, in all my Facebook world and all of the things. And so, and she's in, she's not that far from me in our, in our area. She's um, just a couple hours north of me in Wisconsin. So, you know, she was this like raving um, fan who now is a competitor um, and she's a PT, I'm an OT. So the OT thing for me was really something that I could, um, kind of market Mm -hmm. because I was different than a lot of people in that aspect, but now it's not so different. So now I'm kind of in this, in this, this thought process, you've got me thinking today about, I need to find a way to be different. What's different about me. And that's something that I think I really need to think about. So who do you love to work with? Not who are you good at? What Mm -hmm. age, now that you've done this for a bit, what age Mm -hmm. do you love to work with? I love um, the six to 12 month olds are my favorite. Okay. So my guess is without knowing who the other person is that they are servicing all clients age zero to four with a methodology of blah, 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 based on who you certified with. Right. Like, so Mm -hmm. they're probably trying to serve everybody, right? Mm -hmm. What market research have you done as it relates to where you're ranking today? Right. So do you have any idea like how people find you? Is it on Google? Is it on social media? Are you somebody who loves blogging or is better at TikToking? Like how do people find you? Is it Facebook groups through referrals of past clients? Mm-hmm. I have been finding my people more by engaging in groups and Facebook groups and past client referrals. That's been where, and I've been very slow. So that's been where my referrals have been mostly coming from a couple of pediatricians, but mostly word of mouth and Facebook engagement. Okay. So a couple of things, you know, just to get your mind thinking, right? First thing I would look at is niching in to something a little more specific. What happens between six and 12 months? The bonus of six to 12 month olds is that optimal growth wise, they don't need to eat anymore, right? They're out of a swaddle. They might be using a swaddle transition product like the magic sleep suit, or they are no longer using that and they are just in a wearable blanket. Okay. So you don't have the stress of like, I've got to teach my baby to settle in the right swaddle and they might still be eating overnight. And you know what I'm saying? So like, Mm -hmm. I think it's six months, it's a clean break from that. Right. But now what's happening? Is your baby sitting up? Is your baby crawling? Is your baby standing? Is your baby able to put the pacifier back in themselves? Is your baby starting solids? Are you doing baby led weaning, right? So you start to get into like all the questions that a parent would have between six and 12 months, right? There is a ton of development that happens between six Mm -hmm. and 12 months. So if you can focus your messaging on that demographic, right? How do I know if my baby's standing in the crib and wants me to lay him back down? My baby will stand and sleep all night. My baby can't put the pacifier in, so I'm still going in 400 times a night, right? Developmentally or OT-wise or PT-wise, how do I get baby to take their own pacifier? How do I know if baby's choking on food? And that means that there's probably a lip tie that they never caught because they were formula fed and the bottle didn't seem to bother them, right? You got to start thinking about it from the mind of a parent between six and 12 months. Speak just to that audience. Do it through blog posts. And what I would recommend is you go back to Facebook groups right? So go to all those Facebook groups, if they're just in Wisconsin or like wherever else they are, right? And look at them and find like sleep consultant, baby sleep coach, right? Need a sleep coach near me, whatever. Okay. And figure out what those questions are. Your first step for any of the recent ones, don't go back like four years because those kids are in kindergarten now, right? But what you want to look at is where are they asking questions? My baby's standing in the crib. Should I lay her back down? Every time I lay her back down, she just stands back up. What do I do? Right? You write a blog post on that, okay? And then you go back to the Facebook group and you push the blog post out there and go, I actually just wrote a blog post on that. And the cool thing about blog posts, guys, is you can backdate them, right? Post it today, February 26th. Backdate it to like, I don't know, December 1st, right? So it doesn't look like you just wrote it today. And then you go, here you go. Here's a blog I actually wrote on that. Here's a blog I wrote on that. Oh, I just wrote a blog on that. Funny enough. 
So then you look like the expert. You're sharing quality content. You're not trying to sell them on anything. I can't stand when I see sleep coaches. They're like, just became a sleep coach. Book a call with me. It's free. And I'm like, holy shit, you have no idea what you're doing. You just started and you have no experience. And I'm going to like lose out on a client to you. No, I basically respond with helpful information and I'm real like nonchalant about it. Like here's a link to our website. You know, if you like our approach, we'd be happy to connect. And that's it. And I think people appreciate that non-salesy side of things, right? Because I'm a person. Yeah, yeah, they do. I'm a person. And that's what you got to look at. So I would say for you, go back. If you're comfortable doing that, you got to get content mm -hmm. up on your website. Google has to know that you're the authority, right? And that was part of what I sent out yesterday in the newsletter. Just check your junk if you didn't get it. But domain authority. What's your domain authority? Mm -hmm. Are you a six or a two? Right? I work my tail off right now and I'm like a 31, which is good, okay? But I'm very strategic because that number tells Google that I know what I'm doing as a sleep coach, right? While everybody else is hanging out at the like one to 10. So you gotta be strategic about some of that stuff, Tracy. That's where I would start for you, low hanging fruit. See what the questions are there in the past two months. Yeah. Write new blogs on them and then go back out to all those posts and be like, I wanted to post this, thought it was helpful. Oh, you're asking about this. Just grab this freebie of mine. It explains it. Right. And just send them the freebie. Don't try to hide it behind like a paywall. Like sometimes I just put my freebies out direct to AWS where I have them live. No opt-in because the value I just built with that person, not asking for anything behind a paywall. Right. Mm -hmm whether it's a blog or a document or a download. I'm not trying to just crowbar you into something like opt in and then I'm going to hammer you with text messages every day. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. That's what you got to Thank you. Oh, that's that's super helpful. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Good, good. Ah, see, I love doing this. Brings me joy. Maureen, I know you're still figuring out all the different things going on on your end. So I won't put you on the spotlight, but if you have any questions. Yeah, no, I'm very much in the research, um, you know, phase, I should say, and just trying to figure out, you know, what I'm thinking of doing. Is there anything out there, you know, just deep dive into the market research for that to see if, if what I have, you know, does have value in the market. So I'm still at the very early stages. <laughs> so I'm sure I will have questions. Thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. And Ashika, I know you're relatively new in this world of sleep coaching. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, since you guys are out here live, you can get the benefit of it. And uh, if not, that's okay too. I know people are like listening and driving and doing all the things. Uh, so I get it. Kelly, is there anything I missed? Nope, I think you covered it all today. I mean, uh Tracy, what do you think? I, I'm I'm very curious. This is your your second time through, like. You sounds like today gained an even newer nugget than first time through. So um, oh, I I love to do this because I feel like every like it's so much information and every time I well every time I'm only doing it twice but I feel like I get something more out of it. So it gives me something to focus on when when I'm starting to get slow or um, I need like a new like change to change my focus a little bit. Yeah, so. like a reset again, level, uh -oh. leveling up, resetting. I, I think it's awesome. It's great mm -hmm. to see you back um, because, you know, that just to me proves again, I can boast Courtney here. It's her value. Like she's her, her mind is there to, you know, help. And when she does say she does this to uh, bring joy to others, she 100% does, you know, she goes to bed happy and, and helping people is, uh, her authentic self. So it's pretty amazing. Love it. Um, I, yep. Me too. Me too. And honestly love seeing your little, I mean, that's, that's fun because that's what it's all about right there. <laughs> She's cute. Well, good. All right. So homework, did I miss anything? I don't think so. I have like nope. my random notes, but no, I think we're good out uh, in the Facebook group. So what is that one nugget you picked up today? Put that out in the homework post. Tell us, you know, how you're feeling. Every time I do this, I look for the feedback. So when I go back to make the next series of this, if I find like, hey, there was a lot of interest, which is why I changed it this time and the way I do it, 
that's what tells me guys. So by doing that homework, it helps me to understand like how you're feeling, what's going on, where you want me to spend more time. I do these two, maybe three times a year. That's it. So um, just keep me posted. And if not, we'll see you out here tomorrow. Um, I will send the link out where you can register to get all of the replays in the portal. Uh, if you want to keep those in your back pocket, I'm not going to post them in Facebook this time. Um, Facebook is changing all kinds of stuff with APIs and things. So I'm not going to deal with that. I'm just going to put them in my nice little happy portal and make it one place for you. That's also accessible easily on your mobile device. So you can listen on the go. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you.